So after three complete start overs, many instances of firming back a little bit and many, many months of work, these are now finally finished. And I can finally talk about them because I finally gifted these to my boyfriend. Uh, these are the Bernie Sanders mittens. And uh, yeah, I'd like to talk to you about how I made them. So this video will be divided up into two parts. First, I will be talking about how I made them. It's the making off. I have a bit of behind the scenes footage. And then I'll have a very special guest join me here to talk about his perspective on these mittens. For those who are new here, my name is Emma and this here is my tiny craft corner where I talk about knitting and sometimes other uh, yarn related crafts. So yeah, let's get into the video. Uh, I used the free pattern by, let me get this right, uh, Meg Harlan. She created a free pattern based off the birdie mittens. It is a untested pattern, so um, no guarantees that these will fit you. And I have noticed that. I have noticed that it's not a tested pattern, no shade to the creator whatsoever, but there were a few issues I have with it, so I'd like to talk to you about those. Yeah, let's start with the first attempt. So that was with these uh, cotton yarns. I don't even remember the brand because it was in my stash long before I decided to make a knitting channel and document my knitting journey. But I had four balls of this cotton yarn. I was planning on knitting the mittens in this. However, I quickly realized that that was not um, a great idea because the gauge did not match. So I decided to double up on everything. Um, when everything was doubled, the rows and the stitches I doubled. And this is how far I got before I decided I would not continue. Uh, wait a second, let me just close the curtain here because this is way too bright. Just, just a second. Yeah, that should be better. But this is how far I had gotten with the mitten. You can see that I already uh, put the stitches on hold for the thumb. And I will just quickly pop it on for you. Ooh. Lots of loose threads here. But this is how far I got with doubling everything on the pattern. And this is, yeah, it's quite nice, it's quite okay. But I, in the end, did not like the colors that much. And I did not like, well, it was a bit too loose here and too tight here and I don't know, it was just not to my liking at all. I talked about these, um, I talked about this attempt in a previous video, my first ever video, uh, which you can watch up here somewhere. It will be linked somewhere here, so you can watch that. Um, I do have to mention the audio on that is very rough, so bear with me on that one. Um, but yeah, these were the first attempt where I doubled up on everything in um, yeah, in cotton yarn, but it did not turn out that well. Then I made a second attempt. That attempt, I just went with the pattern as it is. I got new yarn, that is this Scheepjes Color Crafter yarn. And yeah, it was nice yarn. It's acrylic, 100% acrylic, and the gauge matched uh, almost perfectly with the pattern which is great. Um, however, the mittens did not turn out that great. They were way too small and too tight for me. For me even, and my boyfriend has uh, bigger hands than me. So I knew they were not going to fit him. Um, so yeah, I gave up on that with only one month before his birthday because they were, these were supposed to be his birthday mittens. But, uh, <laughs> They were not, I um, gave them, I gave them to him a month uh, after his birthday. So it's a bit of a shame, but uh, the mittens did turn out well in the end. So the second attempt was with this Scheepjes Color Crafter. I got four, let me get them. I got four colors of this 
and these colors I like a lot more. They matched quite well, but the end result turned out to be way too small, even on me. And uh, yeah, my boyfriend has bigger hands than me, so I knew it was not going to fit him. So I decided to frog all the way back and start over. And the third attempt was perfect. Well, the third attempt was a lot better. Let me say that because these are the result of the third attempt. And um, yeah, I decided to knit the cuff as is because this part was quite all right. It's quite snug, but that's what you want in a mitten, of course. You don't want it to be sliding off. But then I decided to um, add four stitches on either side. So that's eight stitches in total. Just to have this be a bit wider. Um, yeah, and I think that was a great call because currently these mittens fit my boyfriend almost perfectly, I would say. However, I did have a mistake with the second mitten, which is the left one. And I accidentally, instead of adding eight stitches to the pattern, I added only four. So this one is a bit more snug than that one. But I only realized that when I was literally here at the decreases. And at that point, I was already one month overdue and I was not, I was not going back all the way here. So at the first mitten, I realized when I was up about here or something that uh, they were way too small because this part is only supposed to be uh, six rows tall, I think. And in the end, I did 16 here and 16 there because this is also supposed to be six. And currently the mittens fit my boyfriend um, quite perfectly. So only having six rows here and six rows here is not enough. It was even not enough for me. Um, yeah, it was even not enough for me. So for him, they would be absolutely tiny. Um, yeah, it was a great call to go all the way back, but it did set me back another couple of days, maybe even a week, because after frogging from here all the way down to here, uh, I just could not touch it um, for a little while. So those were some of the modifications I made to the pattern. Another modification I did was I double-stranded it. So the second attempt was only uh, single-stranded, but this time I double-stranded it. You can't really tell on the mitten itself, I think. It made it a bit more sturdy, a bit more warm, I think. So I have two uh, balls of every color left right now. So yeah, uh, that's just what I decided on doing. I think one strand would have been fine, but I did not really like how see-through it became. I knit this on four millimeter needles, which is the recommended uh, needle size for the yarn. It just didn't really turn out that great the second attempt, so I just... So I wanted to double strand it, and I think it was a great call because it now is quite warm. Uh, I will show you how it looks on the inside. There are still ends to weave in, but um, let me just quickly turn it inside out for you. Like that. Yeah, this is how the inside looks right now. There are a lot of ends uh, to weave in, but uh, obviously having these uh, floats makes it even more warm. And these ends will be weaved in uh, somewhat soon. I did not want to weave them in yet because I uh, really wanted to see how they fit my boyfriend before weaving in everything and blocking everything because after that, it's really hard to go back and uh, change some of the things. And yeah, he did not mind that a lot, I think. But we will hear from him soon. So yeah, that was the entire process of me knitting the mittens. So they're currently right here. And I have brought a special guest here today. Hi guys. Uh, maybe you could introduce yourself a bit. 
So my name is Dominic. Um, as you probably know, I'm Emma's boyfriend, and I'm here to talk about the mittens that she made for my birthday. So um, here I am. Yeah. What do you think of the mittens? I love the mittens. Um, I think it's been a week now since I got them. Um, yeah, I thought it was so thoughtful and. I did not know what to expect because I knew you were making a birthday present for me. You talked about it in your videos. Um, and I knew it, it was probably going to be something personal, but I just did not know what it was going to be. Um, but yeah, I love them. Uh, I think they're, the timing is great because it's going to be winter soon. Um, so yeah, mm -hmm. really happy with them. <laughs> Maybe you could try them on? Of course. Yeah, so you did know I was knitting something, but you didn't know what it was. So maybe yeah. you can tell how I was able to keep it a secret from you? So, <laughs> <laughs> there was um, basically one rule that I had to follow, which was do not open this drawer, uh, which is right beneath the television that I'm currently looking at. Um, so this, these are the mittens. Uh, so that was the main rule I had to follow, and that wasn't too difficult because I don't, I don't ever go in there, it's just your knitting stuff. Um, but you did tell uh, some of my friends and my family even what you were going to knit for me. Like you didn't personally tell my family, but my, like my mom watched your video. Uh, so she knew what, what you were making. And I remember uh, calling her recently and that was after my birthday because it took you a little while um, to finish them. And she was like, what do you think of your, your present? And <laughs> I was like, no, 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 stop, stop. Don't, don't say anymore because uh, she hasn't finished it yet. And I didn't want her to like uh, spoil the surprise, uh, which she didn't, so um, that was good. And then one of my other friends also watched your video and she, um, did, she knew that it was a secret. It was, this was a couple of months back and uh, she said like, hey, uh, just so you know, I'm not going to ruin, ruin the surprise, <laughs> but I do think it is a really lovely present, really fun. And um, she, she was also curious how, um, how, how, how I would find them. So. Um, Basically, I guess it was harder for the people around me to <laughs> to keep it a secret uh, than for me because for me it was just like I'm, I'm a patient guy. Like I, I know that you're working on it. I know you've got a lot of other other projects that you're working on. Um, so I just figured, you know, I'll see them eventually. So. Yeah, and now you have them in time for winter. So that's yeah, <laughs> that's the best. <laughs> that's, thing. that's the best yes. thing. And do you still have to weave in the ends? Um, but you can't really see them because you're on the inside. So yeah. It's great. I think you, you mentioned how you didn't want to like extend the waiting period. So you were like, I'll just give them to you now and I'll finish the ends afterwards. Yeah. It's also a fitting issue because I did not know for sure if they were going to fit you. Yeah. So when, uh, after weaving in the ends, it's really hard to go back and fix them. And if they wouldn't fit and I had really fixed them in, that would be kind of a shame. And now I still have the ability of going back a bit and adding some length yeah in terms story. of length they're great like they're perfect <laughs> it's just that the entrance they're a bit hard to get my hands into uh but it works it just takes a couple seconds but in terms of like length my fingers uh they have enough space it's it, they're perfect so these are the bernie sanders mittens and uh, i obviously gave them to you because you have some affinity with american uh, politics and um as you know the bernie mittens were gifted to burning by someone and yeah. i did use a free pattern for this but there are some paid patterns and you can buy the finished objects from people who knit them and i bet i'm just wondering what do you think of that what do you think of people profiting off of the well especially the bernie sanders mittens they're a replica from a gift that he yeah got. yeah i do think it goes against the spirit a little because as you said uh it's a gift and I, I, it's it's a while back, um, but I thought uh, from from what I remember, it was, it was was this really like cute older lady that was like, "Hey, <laughs> Bernie, love your work. Uh, I made you some mittens," and it just it doesn't really sit well with me um, to know that like people take her pattern or take her mittens and then um, basically sell it. But I should add, like I do not really know if uh, she had plans with them, what her plans are or were. Um, so I kind of think it's a tough one because yeah, she should be like, she should be able to, um, to have a patent basically to copyright it or whatever, uh, like you do with pictures or movies. Like in my job, we use pictures from a, um, photo agency, but we pay them a subscription fee, you know, um, we can't just go willy nilly, uh, take, 
uh, their pictures and, and use them and um, make money off of it. But on the other hand, um, yeah, I mean, they do provide a service and you cannot like police the entire internet or whatever and prevent people from, from making a pattern. So I do think, yeah, there should be like a process in place for her to, you know, whatever, if she wants to go to court or whatever and say like, hey, this is my idea and um, yeah, people are making money off of it and not consulting me. Um, I think there should be like a process for her to be able to get some of the profits, get some of the uh, the earnings and basically work it out from there. Um, but I'm happy that you used the free pattern because, well, first of all, I don't want you to pay for it. <laughs> like you're, it, take, it took you long enough to, um, to make my present, mm -hmm. obviously. And then uh, second, uh, yeah, it just, it feels better knowing that um, basically no one got taken advantage of, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, I really agree with your views there. So it's great. That's really why I chose a free pattern. It's not because I did not want to pay a few euros for a pattern, uh, but really it's the ethics side of it. I did not want to give someone money for a pattern that they, well, they didn't steal it. They obviously did some work looking at Bernie's mittens and copying that, but they did copy something. And I don't really want anyone to profit from a copy. So do you think that there's something that I might be missing because obviously I'm not a knitter myself. I do not, I'm not in that community that much. Um, so is this a common practice? Do you know that, is this something that um, people talk about a lot because I just related to what I know from my job as I talked about, um, or, you know, I think of movies, like it's not, it's not legal to download a movie, for example, uh, people do it and you can't really prevent people from doing it on a, on a big scale. Um, but it's, it is, there is a process, you know, there is a way for people that actually produce a movie to, um, yeah, to, to make a case out of it. Is this a big thing in the knitting community? Is knitting like a branch that is basically forgotten because you've got music royalties, you've got movies and all that stuff. So is there something equivalent for knitting? Yeah, I think, uh, so the biggest similarity I can think of is the photo cardigan that I'm currently knitting. Uh, so that was obviously Taylor Swift's uh, cardigan from the Folklore album. And this big brand called Lion Brands made a pattern off of it and uh, uses that as a kit so you can buy, so you can get the pattern and buy the yarn. But the pattern itself is free. Right. So usually when things are copied, you can get it for free. Um, I know the All Too Well scar from Taylor Swift, also replica, you can get that pattern for free. So that's usually is for free, but there are always some people who try to sell it yeah. and try to profit out of it. But usually it's the other way around. So with uh, Shein, for example, they copy a lot of small creators in the knitting and crochet community. They copy their patterns and then sell it on Shein the fast fashion without way. the creators being compensated yeah in any absolutely way. no compensation yeah, whatever, no, whatsoever. yeah that, that shouldn't be that shouldn't be allowed i mean i mean what i mean is I sh there should be a way for them to uh yeah to to make a case out of that because that doesn't seem right yeah 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 i think copying the pattern for your own use or just ma even making a free pattern out of it is okay because a lot of knitting is replicating. It's just, yeah. you look at a famous big sweater uh, that someone famous wore, for example, the Harry Styles cardigan. And then, uh, I don't know if you know that one. Harry Styles wore a cardigan on uh, one of his concerts and then people really liked it. So people knit a cardigan like that themselves. It's a patchwork cardigan, so it's pretty right. easy to copy. And then, uh, actually, the brand that the cardigan was off released a free YouTube tutorial to make the cardigan. Okay. So they're playing off of it, but really copying um, famous designs is a big thing of knitting. Which is profiting off of them is not. Yeah, in terms of Harry Styles, like it's good that they basically got ahead of it by making their own video. Uh, right, it's a video, right? Like yeah, a tutorial on how to to knit it. Um, I think that's the best that you can do because 
especially if you're that famous, like people are going to try and copy it. So you should be ahead of, of ahead of that. And I reckon that Harry Styles have got has got this entire team around him that is conscious of that. Uh, but this lady in Vermont, <laughs> she does not have a professional <laughs> no, team, you know. No. Um, especially back then, maybe now that she does, I don't know. But um, so that is, in, in my opinion, that is somewhat different because, um, yeah, it's just this one person that doesn't probably doesn't occupy herself with any of that. Um, but then she made something that a lot of people seem to like, you know, and. Yeah, she should be able to reap the benefits of that in some way. Um, so yeah, like Bernie Sanders comes on TV, right? It's on inauguration day. He doesn't know that it's going to be a giant meme. No one knows. <laughs> he just sits there and and like it takes off immediately. And I think that's that's a good thing. Like that is that is fun. People are having fun with it. Um, and there's an entire industry created around it. I think that that is not necessarily a bad thing. And there's not really an opportunity. Um, I guess in the initial stages for people to like know where he got the mittens, who the lady is and, and how she can uh, be included in the process of like creating a pattern or whatever that it's just like log logistically it's not really um, feasible I think in the initial mm -hmm. stages. Um, but then uh, when it becomes feasible, when, when she can comes out and says like, hey, I made these, uh, these mittens for Bernie. Um, yeah, there should be a way for her to um, to be included in that entire process, in that entire um, fad, basically. So yeah, I think there should be a middle ground that should be found um, to help creators, you know, because it can't just be the case that someone makes something, someone else comes along and jacks it, and then basically uh, with their entire uh, knowledge and their entire team that they have, all the professionals, all the outlets that they have to, 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 um, uh, yeah, to, to reach a, a wide audience, uh, that they basically take everything and then there's nothing left for the initial creator. So I don't think that's a good thing. So basically don't profit off of small creators. Yeah. That's our main. Yeah. Well that, yeah. 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 I think we agree. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we agree. I think that's uh, yeah plenty for this discussion right now. All right. I don't think uh, yeah we can go on and on about this. No, but, no, no. Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> this is not my wheelhouse. So no. <laughs> thirteen minutes is plenty. <laughs> yeah, no. But I'm glad you really like them, and of course, I'm excited to see you wear them. I hope you don't lose them, as you tend to do with uh, mittens and gloves. That and is everything. a problem. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> um, yeah, what happens? often is I leave them in the train or whatever. Yeah. So I take a train ride and then it's the middle of winter and I take them out when I'm on the train and I leave them on the table or whatever and I just get up and forget to take them with me. But I do not have the same emotional attachments <laughs> to those mittens as I do to these. So we're gonna try and like if I lose them, at least it's a sign that I wore them, right? Yeah. <laughs> and if you lose them, anyone finds these in a uh, train somewhere, their mine or his, their ours, you know where to find them. Please give them back. <laughs> or send them to the creator in Vermont, that's cool. So. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's, uh, yeah, I think we're going to close it off with that. All right. Yeah, so thank you for coming along. And uh, I'm really glad to have you here uh, with me and to have you here with me of discussing uh, the patterns, discussing the ethics of knitting even. And uh, yeah, please, uh, let's continue this discussion in the comments down below. If you have an opposing view to this or if you have anything to add, please uh, comment down below and I'll make sure to uh, comment and continue this conversation because I think it's a really important conversation to have. Um, and yeah, with that, basically, I'll, yeah, I'll see you guys again real soon, next week probably. And yeah, I'll have a new video for you then. Bye! Take care, guys.